Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Daniel Plasted. Hello. Hey, Daniel. We're going to talk about MS Build today and some of the new things that are in the build system. Yep. So, fair amount to talk about, bunch of changes, mm -hmm. bunch of thought has been going into this, which, you know, some people might think, oh, I, I hit build, what do I need to be concerned about? Mm -hmm. But there's actually a fair amount that's gone on under the covers. Oh, yeah, and, and far more than we'll cover here. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll cover several different things, uh, but some of them have been more covered than others. So I wanted to start out with uh, structured logs and structured log viewer uh, for MS Build. And this is something that if you have ever, have you written MS Build custom tasks and targets? No, I have not. Okay, if you've ever done that, or if you've ever tried to debug, you know, why is the build not doing what I expect it to do? Uh, this will be amazing to you. I usually think if the build's not working, it's because of something I did wrong. It, it, if it is something <laughs> you did wrong, uh, then this would help you investigate why. Okay. Um, and we're not talking about compiler errors there. Right. I mean, those are uh, kind of well understood. You double click on it and it shows you where in your source code. But this is if you're extending the build, if you have a process uh, to maybe you're using MS Build to create NuGet packages or you're injecting a tool in there somewhere okay. to generate code for you or, or a host of other things, or if you're using a NuGet package to do that. So I have this project here and uh, I've built it and what I've done, I've, I've built it from the command line and I've just added the, the flag slash BL and that stands for binary log. So that's gonna create a binary log for me. And uh, so I have it here, msbuild.binlog. So now I'm gonna, that is built into msbuild as of uh, update three of Visual okay. Studio 2017. So does that happen automatically now? Or is that uh, something so you that need it's to ask for inside Visual Studio? So inside Visual Studio, you don't currently get this. Okay. So this is more like if you wanna debug it, you do a command line okay. build. Okay, got it. Uh, and, and so there's different flags for how to log, and this is a new one that says create a binary log. Uh, so slash BL, and that'll create msbuild.binlog. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a tool, which is an open source project by, uh, by Kirill Osenkov, uh, who works uh, for Microsoft, uh, which then gives you a view of, of this log. And so you can see a tree of what Ooh. the build did. Uh, all of the things that it ran, what the inputs and outputs of those things were, um, you can do a search. So here I'm gonna search for strong name. And I got a whole bunch of results because that's kind of the name of my project. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm looking for the target that was actually doing strong namer so I can filter it down by saying dollars target. And then, so it jumps right to that target that ran. And then I could double click on that and this shows me the definition of this target here. So this is the actual code that was running and then I can expand down in here and I can see the inputs to this task that was called here, the parameters. I can drill all the way down and see all the data that's flowing through MS Build. Uh, and then this is the outputs, uh, the diagnostic messages that that target, that task uh, output. Uh, and then, you know, I'm doing some more stuff here which I can see. So, if you're not customizing MS Build, if you're not writing your own logic, hopefully you never need to do something like this. But I do a whole bunch of that in mm -hmm. my job. That's a large part of what I do, and I can't imagine continuing to, to do it without this tool. Uh, it's, a, it's pretty amazing. And uh, furthermore, uh, this tool is new. I think it was written towards the beginning of this year. That's when okay. I found out about it. But it, uh, it keeps getting better, this, uh, you know, double clicking and going to the source that was added uh, this summer, I think. And mm -hmm. I just, I did it and I found out about it. I'm like, this is amazing. Cool. Um, so how do you get that? So if you want to know about this tool, just go to msbuildlog.com. Okay. And that's got some documentation, the link to download the actual viewer tool. So that's the URL to go to. Okay. So then moving on from that, let's talk about uh, the journey that we've taken okay. uh, in Project Files. So for I don't know how long now, four-ish years, we've been working on .NET Core, this open source cross-platform version right. of .NET. And we want to be able to compile .NET code. We want to be able to do that from the command line, from 
Windows, from Linux, from Mac OS. And when we started that, MS Build was not cross-platform. Mm -hmm. And really, the MS Build project files weren't great. They weren't kind of appropriate for the experience that we were going for. We were going for a very simple experience, an experience that would appeal to developers who didn't want a lot of tooling. They just wanted to be use a text editor to edit their code. And so we patterned it a bit after uh, what something like Node.js or uh, you know any other scripting language or anything would do. And so we had what we called project.json. Mm -hmm. This was a project format. And so if we look at that, this is what it looked like. And this was only in .NET Core app. So if you hadn't been doing a lot of .NET Core, you wouldn't have necessarily seen this. Yes, you would not see this much unless you were doing .NET Core or a little bit of .NET Standard, maybe. Okay. Uh, in, in Visual Studio 2015 was the time frame when we had this tooling. Mm -hmm. And so this had a lot of advantages. It was a fairly simple project file. You could imagine typing this into an editor. Yeah. Uh, is from scratch, maybe, maybe not, but definitely editing it, making changes in here. It had, uh, it did not list each separate source file. It just, by default, although you could override it, it assumed, okay, I'm just going to compile all the C Sharp source files in the project folder. Mm -hmm. And uh, it made it very easy to refer to NuGet packages. Uh, this is kind of under the dependencies node. It made it easy to target multiple frameworks. So we have the full .NET framework. Now we have .NET Core. We have .NET Standard. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you wanted to multi-target, compile separately for each one because they have different capabilities. And it made it easy to just say, OK, these are the multiple frameworks I'm targeting. When I build, it builds for each one separately. Yep. And uh, another advantage that it had is it was easy to swap out a NuGet package reference with source. So if you're using a library that comes from NuGet, an open source project, and you find a bug in that, then you could easily just clone that repo from GitHub, put it in the right place, and, and pretty easily just hook it up to your project so that now it's no longer using that package that came from NuGet. You're using the source code. And so okay. you can easily debug it and fix a bug. Uh, so that flow was, was pretty uh, easy. And so uh, a lot of people love this because uh, those were some, some great new features, right. um, a great experience. But as we continued to develop the tooling, we came to the, you know, at the time, unfortunate realization that we, we just couldn't move forward with this project JSON based tooling. And that's because everything else in .NET, all other .NET projects were, were built with MS Build. And they didn't, project JSON did not integrate well with MS Build. If it's just .NET Core, you know, maybe it was okay to have something different. But as .NET Standard becomes more and more important and we want you to be able to have libraries that work across all of .NET, mm -hmm. then you need references from a .NET Framework project or a Xamarin project or a UWP project to your .NET Standard project. Right. And also from your .NET Core project to your .NET Standard project. And when those were completely different types of build systems, that, that didn't work well. We, we did make it work to some degree, but there were always rough edges, and uh, it just ultimately didn't work well. And then you have okay. this whole ecosystem of tooling right. that understands MS Build projects and extensions to Visual Studio, tools that run over your projects. All, all this whole ecosystem didn't apply to this new thing. And the other thing is that we, we had this new project format, but that meant we basically had a new build engine. We, we built this new build engine from scratch to, to handle this. But a build engine is not a simple thing. I and so, and so over time, it's like, OK, well, we want parallel builds to be faster mm -hmm. so that we can take advantage. And then we want incremental builds. You know, if you make one change in one project, you don't want to rebuild everything. Right. Uh, and you know, people really want to extend their builds, too. They want to inject in the middle of of when it's building or you know when a project is done building they want to run a tool and before it gets consumed and so this didn't really ex support a whole bunch of extensibility either so we took a step back and we said you know we, we really have to go back to MS build uh, but we know that there's lots of great things about this project system and so we can't just give those up we have mm -hmm. to bring those to MS build but 
the funny thing is, is that we made this decision and you know we're we're living in this open source world and so we we went ahead and told everyone well yep. we're going to move to ms build uh, and it's going to be great. We're going to take all of these things. But to be honest, we didn't know exactly how that was going to work. We had to figure it out. Uh -huh. And uh, so we kind of just said, you know, we're going to switch back to MS Build and trust us, it will be great. Uh, and so if you look at this, this is what you get when you create a new .NET Framework project in the old system. So this is what people are used to yep. as far as MS Build. So if you go from this, you know, simple, project.json yeah. and you're expecting to go to something like this, this isn't really human editable. Right. Uh, and, it, and there's a whole bunch of other of those great features that it just doesn't have. And so people didn't really believe us that we were going to be able to get those benefits. Um, but we, we did manage to bring a whole lot of that. So what we have today now, you create a new project and you have that. Okay. And so the, the, you know, this is XML, it's still XML, so if, if you like, Jason, uh, sorry about that. But this is much, much simpler. This is something that you can imagine typing from scratch if you had to. Mm -hmm. And definitely that you can edit, that you can merge and get much easier, et cetera. Okay. And all of those, those benefits, you know, the including your source files by default, not listing them separately, uh, easy references to NuGet packages, uh, you know, clean project files and all of that, uh, we were able to bring. The one that we didn't entirely get is uh, bringing in NuGet packages and replacing them with source. Mm -hmm. That's kind of there, but it's kind of an advanced thing and you have to know how to do it. Um, so that's something that hopefully eventually we can deliver. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, so here we are. Uh, and the kind of the philosophy behind this was to have, you know, a small project file, simple, easy to edit. That means, you know, you're going to have defaults. You're going to have conventions that are followed. So the philosophy is have, you know, sensible defaults that you can override if you need to. So, so by that's, that's the proj file you get on, on file new, right? Yes. Okay. And then the one you showed earlier, the console app, that's, so that's, if you create a new console app, you would get that? These are both console apps. So okay. we, we made a bunch of changes to MS right, Build. So the first one's a console app, but yeah, so explain the difference here. Yeah, we made a bunch of changes to MS Build, a bunch of improvements to MS Build, to Visual Studio and everything. But we were, the focus was, we need a project system for .NET Core. Okay. So there's lots of great improvements, and they apply to .NET Core. They apply to .NET Standard. They are making their way in different at different rates into, you know, standard .NET framework projects. Okay. And so this is what you get if you say, "Create me a new .NET framework so project." Those that project file is essentially the same as it's always been. This is right? the same as it's always been. This is create a new .NET Core project. Okay. Now, if I want to use all of this new tooling to target .NET Framework, then I just have to change this target framework. So I can say net 4.6. Mm -hmm. And now this is a .NET 4.6 console app project. Okay. Uh, now, again, this now was- Now, the fact that it's missing a whole bunch of things in the proj file. I mean, there's no, are the references in there? How does that work? Uh, it's all there by default. Right, ah, so okay. this is you know okay. sensible defaults that you can override if necessary. Got it. Um, so it's all there by default, and this is focused for now on .NET Core scenarios. So mm -hmm. there will be some things that don't work uh, depending on what you're doing. If you're just doing a console app, it's probably all going to work. If you want to do a WinForms and WPF app, it's not going to work. You can get it to build if you jump through a few ho hoops, but don't expect the designers in Visual Studio, for example, to work. Mm. So depending on the types of thing and the types of tooling that you need, not all of it supports uh, this, this new project okay. system. Uh, hopefully but, that'll but grow as time goes that's on. That's a goal ultimately. Yes. Okay. Now if you've never, if you don't spend a lot of time in your project files, maybe you've never actually mm -hmm. even looked in the CSproj file, you know, it's, it's all kind of irrelevant, who cares, right? 
to some degree. Is that a fair statement? Uh, le there, let's think about what, uh, what benefits you'll see. So even if you never edit the project file manually, if you're in source control mm -hmm. and you have multiple people editing the same project, you know, you might be doing it by, you know, adding a reference in Visual Studio, right. adding a new file. That's going to affect your project file. And especially with the source files all listed, you're potentially going to have merge conflicts. Okay. Uh, and so this will, since they're just included by default, this would reduce the merge conflicts that you would have in your source control, for example. Okay. Uh, the other thing is that this brings along with it a new way of referencing NuGet packages called package reference. Mm -hmm. And that is expressed more simply in the project file, but also has other advantages with packages.config, which is the original way that NuGet would reference things. When you reference a package, it takes all of its dependencies and references those directly. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you reference the MVC NuGet package, and that depends on a whole bunch of other MVC sub-packages and newtonsoft.json and maybe Entity right. Framework. And so you have all of these packages. It, it walks that graph, but all of them are put directory in your, directly in your packages.config file. Mm -hmm. And so you're just left with all of these references, and there's no indication of what did you actually reference directly versus what came in because it was a dependency. Okay. They're all flattened. So with, uh, with package reference, you just reference the one thing, and that goes in your project file, and then it walks the graph as necessary and gets them all in. But uh, if you just want to, say, remove that one reference, you just remove that, and all of its dependencies will come out. If you want to upgrade okay. it, you just upgrade that reference, and it'll update all of the dependencies, but you don't have this whole churn because the dependency version's changed on all right. of the things it was bringing in. Okay. So that's, that's one benefit of package reference. And package reference is available for standard projects in VS 2017. It works a little bit different okay. uh, under the hood, but basically it should work the same way. And it means that you can get those benefits. And I, I'd highly recommend it today um, to, to think about migrating towards package reference. Okay. So let's look at a demo I have here. So, so here's uh, an app that I have uh, converted to use this new project system. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit the project file. Now, you know, some people never do that. Right. But if you've ever done that, you know you have to right click here, you have to say unload project, and yeah. then you can edit the project. Well, you know, no longer. Here, edit CS proj, and it just comes up directly. Okay. Um, and and so this continues, this only works with core and standard, this doesn't work with regular framework? Uh, for now, yes. Framework or what, however we refer to it. Okay. Yeah. For now, it's <coughs> these new style projects, which by default is just core and standard. Okay. So here you can see a package reference. I'm referencing a NuGet package, uh, and I can, you know, I, I can go to the NuGet dialog and reference it using the user interface, or I can just type here. So package. And if you want to upgrade it, you can just change that version yep. 2.0.0 to 2.1 or whatever. You exactly. also get IntelliSense. So it's really cool. Not that, you know, we don't want to spend all our lives in the NuGet package manager console, but this is a lot easier. Yeah. Okay, so I've typed in the package reference, mm -hmm. and you can see I have over here on the right, I have my dependencies here. So if yep. I save this file, it's going to do a package restore. Oh, I, that was the wrong. <laughs> uh, I actually wanted to reference no the time. So now I do it. I save. Mm -hmm. It's restoring, and then I see I have both of those package references now. Uh, so by default, it includes all of the source file in this folder, uh, which we can see here. All this, those are all included mm -hmm. here, even though they're, they're not directly mentioned here. But if I want to include something outside of that, uh, I can do that. And in, in Visual Studio, you would do that by, by right-clicking on the project and saying add existing item, and then it's add as link. Yep. Uh, it's how you add something outside of it. Here I can just say uh, compile include equals, and then the relative path to it, which is dot dot slash shared slash, or it's not shared, it's common, mdm.cs. So likewise, 
I've added that, and then once I hit save, we'll see that that file will show up over here, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah, there we go. So that file showed up there. I might, you know, it's a shared file. Maybe I want to show it in the subfolder, right? Maybe I want to group all of my common shared stuff separately. So I can do that with, by saying link base. Link is kind of the, the metadata that's used to specify what path it's going to be under. Mm -hmm. So base means uh, use this first and then use kind of the file name or, well, I'll show you, equals common. Okay, so I did that. And so now it's under the common. And just like did it's- Did that literally move, move it? It didn't or, move it. That's okay. just You're just linking to it. Yeah, that's okay. just affecting how it's displayed okay. here. It's Got always it. been, you know, the actual source file lives in this common right. folder. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, maybe I have a common folder and I just want everything in there. I could say star.cs, or if I wanted everything recursively, I could say star, whoops, star star wax star cs. So this is kind of the, the pattern matching that says recursively any folder and then everything with a cs extension. Um, and then because it's going recursively under all the folders, then I get the same folder structure displayed mm. under here. Okay. Okay. So then let's, uh, let's look at what we can do as far as, we have our source files on disk and in the project system. So we can also just rearrange them on disk here. So uh, create a new folder, uh, let's call it source. Um, and then let's say I just want all of my source files to go in there, right? So I just select them, I can drag them in there and we see that it just picked up that they moved, it updated, I can see them there. Nice. Now, let's get another source file from somewhere else and just copy it in. So I can just copy a file in here and it also shows up. You know, but I, you know, I had a file on disk, I just didn't really actually want it to be part of the project. Um, and so the way you've always done that is exclude from project, mm -hmm. right? And it works here. So it's now excluded from project. But we, it's done it in a smart way. Previously, it kind of support, you could have said in your project file, include all files in this directory. But Visual Studio didn't really understand that well. And so if you removed one, it would just replace it with a flat list of all of them, except the one you wanted to remove. So now it's smart enough just to you know, write the exception <coughs> to the general rule that you okay. have to the project file. And then, okay, I, I've made a bunch of changes. Uh, I wanna go back, I wanna undo everything. So let's just go back to that folder. And so I'm gonna do a git reset or I'm gonna switch git branches and it's just going to change stuff on disk. So git reset hard and clean d. Okay, so git just did a bunch of stuff. Okay. And Visual Studio just reacted to the changes. So if you're, if you, that's another advantage that doesn't have to do specifically with editing the project file. If mm -hmm. you're just switching git branches or resetting, Visual Studio would often, if you did that, either show you a bunch of, hey, this changed, do you want to reload it? Uh, or it just might not work. Now, in a lot of cases, it'll just notice it's changed and update it in is Visual this Studio. Same tooling, is this the same tooling it, uh, included in Visual Studio for Mac? Do you know? Uh, not, uh, not exactly. Okay. So Visual Studio for Mac supports these project files. Yep. Um, but I don't know, uh, as far as the IDE okay. and the tooling, exactly how much of the updating and everything that it does. It may support it all. Uh, it may not. You might need to reload. Uh, I don't know directly. Okay. Um, but, uh, but it does support .NET Core projects and yes. .NET Standard projects in this format. Right. Um, so you can definitely edit them and, and use them. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, and what about Visual Studio Code? Same answer? 
Um, so the thing about VS Code is it's it's an editor, right? right. Um, and so you can edit your files in, in VS Code. It doesn't have a project system. You know, the files it shows is, is just the files on disk. Right. So it'll show you the files on disk. Okay. And it'll show you your project file, and you can edit your project file from within there. Uh, so a lot of the experience will work the same way. Uh, it do, it won't have commands to say you know right click exclude from project sure. file. It won't right. have right. Uh, you know the package manager UI which you can use. Right. Um, but it does have all of those editing capabilities, and it will. Uh, there's the plugin for .NET OmniSharp. Uh, so it will give you, you know, the C sharp IntelliSense and everything, uh, and you know, commands to build and run, uh, and those will all work with right. with this too. Cool. So the the one other thing I wanted to show, um, and let's just reset Git. Go back to where I was. Okay, so this is going back to all the changes I had made, I guess. Um, but go back to editing that project file. And then I'm targeting .NET standard here. Mm -hmm. That's my target framework. Uh, one of the things you could do is target multiple target frameworks. And so to do that, you change target framework to target frameworks, plural. right? And then you can have a semi-colon separated list. So I could say net 462. Hmm. And so now this project needs to reload in that case, but now it's targeting .NET standard as well as .NET 462. Okay. And so we can see that there. And so then when I build that, it's going to build it for both of them. Uh, and so if you look at your bin folder, you've got bin, debug is where I am. So then we have the different target frameworks under here. So it's building a different copy of this DLL for each one. So that's standard is one Is that a new four. capability? Yeah, this is new. This was something that Project JSON supported. Okay. Uh, okay. And then now this new style of project. Ah. Got also it. supports. Cool. Yeah. So we're building for not standard 1.4 and for not 4.6.2. Mm -hmm. And there's some, you know, other folders because I didn't clean everything, I guess. Right. Um, the other thing, which I think I forgot to mention at all, uh, is it was easy in Project Jason to create a NuGet package. Uh, and so it's also easy here. Uh, I don't think I actually, this one is old. That's way old. So you can. Simply right click and say uh, pack or I think yeah pack. Pack means create a NuGet package, and you can do that from the command line too. Uh, with .NET pack is the command, and so if that worked, then this should be updated. Yep, created today. Yeah, um, and so this is a NuGet package, and it has these dependencies, and we can see it's got a lib folder, and so it's got the the library compiled mm -hmm. for uh, .NET Standard and .NET Framework. Um, and they're both packaged up into a NuGet package, and then you, someone can reference that, and they'll get the right version depending on whether they're targeting .NET That's Framework or cool. .NET Standard. So that'd make it easy for, for somebody to write some standard functionality and then create a NuGet package out of it and let other people use it yep. fairly easily. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, we've got an ecosystem of, of NuGet packages. Yeah. You know, lots and lots of open source projects. This makes it easier for people to produce those, um, especially now that we want people to support .NET Standard, right. but they might have a separate version for .NET Framework or .NET Core mm -hmm. or Xamarin or whatever. Uh, so this helps it make it easier for them. And then, you know, open source is the main. Uh, I think scenario for NuGet, but if you're inside a large corporation and you've got a team that you know creates tools mm -hmm. that are used across projects, uh, they some of those people create NuGet packages and uh, consume that just within an enter enterprise too. Right. So that's cool. Uh, so that there is just one thing that I also wanted to mention, and this kind of goes back to if you're customizing your MS Build logic. So. Often, if you have like a repository, you, you have settings that you want to apply to all the projects in the repository. And so in MS Build, you can import a project from another project. And 
in the, the old system that was explicit. So here we're importing this Microsoft common props, right? Mm -hmm. And then at the end we're importing Microsoft C Sharp that targets. So that's what a project import looks like. Um, and so often what you would do is if you were setting up a repository with a bunch of projects and you want a common build logic or just common settings, you know, mm -hmm. this is this is the debug configuration or whatever, and this is going to be the output path where everything goes. You would you would create one of these MS build files and then you'd put an import there. But that import is kind of hard to write because your projects might be at different levels, and so it's like I'm going to import dot dot slash dot dot slash mm. dot dot, and I have to have to have the right number of dot dots. So that was hard. There's there was a, a function you could call uh, in this expression, which was get some, I can't remember, it's get directory path to file abo above or something. So there was a way you could say, look up the directory tree until you find a file with this name mm -hmm. and return that path. And so that's what people generally did, but it was just this huge long expression that made your project files ugly. So. That kind of capability is now built into MS Build. Um, so if you have a file named directory.build.props or directory.build.targets, that will automatically be imported. Oh, okay. And so the, the convention with MS Build is that props are the kinds of things that are kind of imported before the body of your project, and targets are the things that are imported at the end. Okay. And so now MS Build, if you're using the common targets, which all .NET projects will, will look for a file called directory.build.props to import before it processes the bulk of your project, mm -hmm. and a file called directory.build.targets after it uh, does Got the bulk it. of it. And so if we look in directory. And so here you can see that we're using that there. In okay in one of our projects. Um, anyway, so that's just kind of a nugget. That's new in MS Build 15. And for people who have open source projects or in the enterprise who want you know, a common build system across some projects, uh, that's going to be pretty useful. Cool. Yep. Cool. That's what I have to cover. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for that. A lot of nice tidbits in there. So even if you even if you weren't using the core, the standard projects, um, there's still some some good learnings in there, and a lot of a lot of the things that we're seeing in there will make it into the the classic. Is that what we call it now? Yeah, <laughs> you can't I mean, call it standard. Uh, classic can't call or it the standard legacy framework. or existing. Legacy. Or, you know, I don't no, know what I, words. I, yeah, I'm not going to use that word. word. That's so. a bad word. So Cla I don't know what to call all of this stuff, <laughs> okay. but. Uh, but yeah, a lot of that is, and, and directory.build.props and targets, yep. that works everywhere you're right. using MS Build okay. 15, which is VS 2017 or higher. Right. Uh, and the structured logger also works everywhere okay. uh, in, in update three or higher. Although if, if you go to the, the site for the viewer, it's got ways to get it to work with previous versions too, okay. actually. So as far as custom logic and debugging, there's, there's great improvements uh, for anyone. Yep. Uh, and then lots of great project system and project file improvements for .NET Core and .NET Standard and making their way elsewhere. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. We will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.